On the morning of April 4, 2017, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, on the verge of a military victory against the terrorist insurgency in his country and on the eve of peace talks that would secure his position as president, decided to use chemical weapons he didn't have against a target of no military significance in front of as many cameras as possible to cross the one red line that would ensure his own government's downfall. Soon after, the Academy Award-winning White Helmets, noted for their Oscar-worthy performances, persistent proximity to al-Qaeda, and financial dependence on U.S. aid, bravely risked their lives, handling Syrian victims barehanded against every protocol in the book. Without presenting a shred of evidence, President Donald Trump boldly launched a military strike against Sherrod Airfield because National security interest Promising to help the Beautiful Babies Offer does not apply to babies in Gaza, Yemen, Pakistan, or basically anywhere else. That military strike, a volley of 59 Tomahawk land attack missiles of which 23 actually made it to the target, failed to take out a single runway or even keep the airbase from operating for even 24 hours, but was a complete success for ExxonMobil, Raytheon, and Donald Trump. No one could question the wisdom of striking Syria, except Donald Trump, and no one could oppose such a move, except Russia. The Trump train, still convinced by candidate Trump, and by listening to guys like Lindsey Graham drop bombs here, drop bombs on Assad, drop bombs on ISIS, oh, but they're fighting each other, so maybe we shouldn't do that. And So could you convince Putin to get Assad to step aside? Well, they've been trying to do that. Could I? I don't think it's that important, to be honest with you. I think, frankly, let's say you get rid of Assad or you knock out that government, who's going to take over? The people that were backing and then you're going to have, like, Libya? Mm-hmm. Concluded that this was seventh-dimensional backgammon to make China afraid of the U.S.'s willingness to spend $100 million in a fearsome show of failing to destroy a single airfield. <laughs> Throughout the world, people rejoice as a horrible secular regime in the Middle East is replaced by yet another peace-loving band of ragtag human rights campaigners and child beheaders motivated by a desire to subdue the armies of Rome in an apocalyptic confrontation in Dabiq. The chemicals for the previous red line attack in Syria have since been proven to come from Libya with U.S. approval, but that's probably not relevant to this case. The CIA has released declassified report after declassified report showing that the plan to topple Syria's government has been in the works for decades, but this just shows that they were right all along. The mainstream media unquestioningly asserts that the story is true because the U.S. government says so, but that's okay because we all know the MSM is full of unbiased truth-tellers and dig hard to get the raw facts on every story. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons, Um, and they are beautiful pictures. Even members of Congress think the story is a load of hogwash, but that's okay because they're probably crazy. Because I don't, frankly, I don't think Assad would have done that. It does not serve his interests. It would tend to draw us into that civil war even further. Who, and who so, do you think? Who do you think is behind it? You think you? Who do you think is behind it? Meanwhile, the White House has released a report on its intelligence about the chemical attack that refutes its own version of the story. But that's okay because when has the White House ever lied people into war? This man doesn't exist, and if you think he does, you're an enemy of humanity who should apologize for having been born. Likewise, him, her, her, him, and him. And him and her. This is the 100% true story of the Syria strikes, and if you support sites like The Corporate Report that question it in any way, you are a moonbeam, fake news, tyrant-loving, hippie, pinko, Russian agent, and should commit ritual suicide immediately. If you love your country and or liberty, NASCAR, supermodels, TV, water slides, or your mother, you will not question this story in any way. Ever. This message has been brought to you by the Friends of the Brookings Institute, 